followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, they called the path of the Ahlul Bayt to Shayyu. They called it Dina Ali alayhi salam. They were known in the early days as the followers of Dina Ali alayhi salam. Because we know that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was created from the same light as the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right from the beginning, even during the life of the Holy Prophet himself, following this path has meant that there will be calamities and there will be trials. Imam Hussain alayhi salam himself has said that if you choose to follow the Akbar Bayt alayhi salam, he said, I swear by Allah that afflictions and poverty and being killed comes more swiftly to those of us than racing horses or a torrential stream rushing to its end. So we might be saying, you know, what should we do? What are we supposed to be doing in this age? Aren't we supposed to be the ones that are the best in the world? Sometimes Shia lovers of Ahlul Bayt feel that they are the best in the world. Do we have the evidence to demonstrate that? Imam Hussain alayhi salam said, if these calamities did not come to you, we would not consider you as one of us. Calamities are meant to happen with this path. And this is what we should be teaching our children. Maybe there's a temptation to protect the children from the truth. But they're going to know, they're going to come to know that truth from outside the home if you don't teach it inside the home. They are facing the ugly truth of what's happening to our societies in their schools right now. So we have to have conversations with them and prepare them from a young age how not to fear, importantly, not to fear. Imam al-Sadiq he said, if you intend to be my brothers and my companions, then prepare yourselves for the enmity and hatred of the people. Otherwise, you will not be my companions. This raises the question, to what extent do you compromise on who you are and compromise on this path in order to gain some benefits? What kind of benefits, worldly benefits? To what extent are you willing to give up the principles of this path and the essence of this message? What extent are you prepared to give up in order to get a foothold in a Western society that's going to maybe give you a few little crumbs of appreciation and reward you for compromising on your principles. Imam Sadiq said, a person may have a status with his Lord that he cannot attain through his actions. So you might be thinking again, like, I want to get close to Allah and Akhbarabayt alayhi salam, but I feel so helpless. What can I do? So Imam Sadiq salam said, maybe you might not be able to take the right actions to get that close 
closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, Allah will try you. The one who desires to be close to Allah and Akbar Bayt salam will be tried through his body, his possessions, and his children. If you have patience, if you have sabr, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your status. And we know that Ali al-Mu'mani said, sabr to this deen, patience to this religion, is the same as the head to the body. We need to make sabr our friend. We cannot keep having knee-jerk reactions to different calamities. Running here and running there. Anytime there's a provocation. Because those provocations come knowing that the people are going to make a knee-jerk reaction. We are being played with. People have already studied the psychology of the Muslims. They've already studied the psychology of the Shia. And they know what's going to produce a reaction. And they know what's going to produce chaos. And this is why you need to develop your aql. Reading, studying, researching, understanding politics, understanding psychology. Because the Shia have never succeeded through numbers. The early Shia succeeded by preserving this message through their aql, through keeping secrets. As Imam Sadiq said, on Yom Qiyama, the followers of Ahmad Bayt salam, one of the things they will be tested on will be, did they keep secrets? Did they keep the secrets of their companions? Did they keep the secrets of their friends? Or did they weaken? Did they gossip? Or were they paid to reveal secrets? Because they were thinking of the nearer benefit, as Imam Ali Salam called it. They managed to preserve this message through using their minds and through having courage and through having sabr and through having methods of transmitting this message. <laughs> Imam Saad has also said that the lovers of Ahmad Bayt it's, it's written that calamities are going to happen. It's not too. There's calamities going to happen. He said the lover of Ahmad Bayt his words will be belied. People are going to twist your words. You might find this at work. You might find this at school. Expect that. Expect smear campaigns. Expect people to twist your words. Expect people to plot against you. This is all written for the lovers of, lovers of Ahmad Bayt and Ram Salam. It's also said that the lovers of Ahmad Bayt and Ram Salam will not be able to avenge themselves against the enemy. This is written. If you're thinking now, what are we going to do? How can we get back on the path? How can we overcome the people who are destroying our countries and our communities? It's unlikely that we will be able to in, the, in, in our day and age. We have to prepare for the coming of the Imam of our time, Ajalullah Fraja Sharif. We also have to be prepared for the next world. Two things we need to prepare for in this day and age. Prepare for the Imam of our time, Ajalullah Fraja Sharif. That means not being blinded by the rewards that you get from this society. 
just to attain knowledge and to transmit that knowledge. That's how we prepare for Imam Zaman alayhi salam, and as Amir al-Mu'mani alayhi salam said, all of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam and their followers were prepared for death. And we need to prepare for the next world. The Imams used to teach this knowledge, as it says in the sources, called Ilm al manaya wa al-Balaya, knowledge of death and trials. And the people fighting for the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is any holy progeny, they were told when they're going to die and how they're going to die. And the same happened with the followers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That they were told where on the battlefield they're going to die and how they're going to die. But that knowledge was taken away from the Shia. And as Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, that knowledge was taken away because the Shia could not keep their secrets. They did not have the wisdom to carry this knowledge. We need to prepare our minds to be able to carry the knowledge that the Ahl al-Bayt of Salam had to transmit. Because we do to Wassan, and because we believe that they are still receiving sustenance from from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means they are still there to transmit knowledge to us. They are waiting for us to turn to them and to seek their guidance so that they can transmit that in to us. As we know the famous narration where Amir al salam he said that at the time of the death of the Holy Prophet, he's the Holy Man's Holy Progeny, he said that he revealed to me a thousand gates of knowledge, and through each one of those gates was another thousand gates. And then someone came to Imam Sadiq later and he said, Is it true that the Holy Prophet revealed to Imam Ali salam a thousand gates of knowledge? Through which was another thousand gates. And Imam Sadiq said, Yes, it's true. And then this Father, he said, so how many of those gates have been revealed to the Shia? And he said, not even two. Not even two gates. We are in a dire situation. I think we're all aware of that. We are in a dire situation. And we need to wake up and start to study and start to implement and start to prepare especially the young people, you prepare from now. Even if you're 14, 15, you start to prepare from now for the next 20, 30 years of campaigning against this spiritual darkness that we are facing. This is what these people came, the Ahlul Bayt salam came into this world to teach us. So yes, Alhamdulillah, we are here to celebrate Alhamdulillah, we are very blessed that we have been invited to this celebration. But let's walk away also with a niyyah, a refreshed niyyah, that we are going to go back into the world and do something for Allah and Ahlul Bayt salam. Thank you very much for listening. And may Allah bless everybody in this majlis. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad.